Um, yeah, we're really excited that we get to do that with all of our locations. But that's enough from me because we have the wonderful pastor Rachel Main with us in the studio tonight. You can hear the crowds already. They're wooing. I think I think it was just Andy. There they, there it is. We're really excited to welcome her tonight. So welcome. Thank you. Wow, that was awesome. I was actually just um, thinking that the room was a little quiet. So um, you guys in the chat, I think you guys are pretty noisy, like chucking a few emojis in the chat. So maybe clapping hands, so maybe praise Jesus emojis. Let me know that you're making some noise. And look, why don't you also take a moment to share the service with a friend right now? Because for these next few minutes, we're going to be um, talking about how we can find breakthrough this Easter season in our lives. And I know that God's Holy Spirit is putting the name on, of somebody on your heart right now who you can just quickly take 10 seconds out of this service to invite either tag them in a comment or share the link wherever you're watching from and get them into the service right now because there's nothing like being in church together. You know what we get to experience here at Online Church as a community of people who intentionally gather together in this online space at a specific time every week so that we still get to have a gathering while we may not all be in the same room together. It's actually pretty unique and it's pretty special. And I'm so pumped that we get to be a part of it. And I'm also really pumped that we are in our season of prayer and fasting. If you're new to the Beyond Church family, welcome. And we are on day nine of our very first ever whole church all locations 21 day prayer of season no season of prayer and fasting and I just felt like God's spirit told me as I was standing here in the wings waiting to come on that we should take a moment uh, right now to pray over the corporate prayer requests and the things that people are believing for breakthrough in together. So why don't you put a praying hands emoji in the chat right now to show me that you're partnering with me and let's pray together. Jesus, thank you that we get to be together in online church tonight. And I just pray right now by the power of your spirit and the power of the internet that together our hearts are united tonight as we put before you all the many prayer requests that we're either praying and believing for ourselves or that we've heard about as our friends have shared over this season of prayer and fasting or even maybe the things that are so deep down in our heart that we haven't dared to share them yet. God, we pray for your breakthrough in these circumstances. We pray that we would see miracles right now, right tonight, right now tonight, that we would sense by your spirit that you are moving. We would hear your calling. We would hear the quietness of of your still small voice, holy God. We're grateful that we get to do this together and be in community together. And God, I just pray that we would see an abundance of the fruitfulness of the kingdom of heaven coming to earth as a result of our intentional intentionality around this season of prayer and fasting as a whole church. We're believing for miracles. We're expectant and excited that you are who you say you are. And we pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So great to start tonight in prayer together. So why are we fasting at the moment? Well, here at Beyond Church, our theme for the year 2021 is build. And our theme verse is this. It says, God has chosen you to build his holy house. Be brave, determined and do it. And, you know, we're not just believing for building in our locations. You know, we're not just believing for increase in terms of people saying yes to Jesus and people coming to faith for the first time, although, of course, we are believing for that as well. We are also believing for God to be building new things in us and that in this season of prayer and fasting, as we remove things, as we remove distractions, perhaps, if you're one of those many people I've heard that are giving up social media, or as we move something that gives us comfort or that we find comfort in like chocolate and coffee as I know some people are giving up as we remove those things we make room to draw near to God 
Make room to spend time in His presence. Make room to hear from Him in new ways, about new vision, about fresh calling, about new direction, about what He's calling us into next. And I'm here to tell you tonight that an intentional season of prayer and fasting like this, it's a game changer. It's, it's an accelerant. It's one of those spiritual disciplines that takes you into the next. But... God's ways are different than our ways. And usually when he wants to build something new in us, he begins by demolishing. He's a builder who has to get rid of the old rubble out of the way first before he can start to rebuild. He grows new things in us. He promises to do that. But he usually begins that process by pruning off us the old things that are dead and irrelevant, the old ways that are not of his kingdom. He blesses and prepares us for new abundance and favor and blessing, but first asks us to make a sacrifice, to surrender something, or show our willingness to go without something that we love. It's kind of like leveling up in a computer game. Now, I'm not even gonna pretend that I know very much about computer games, because I don't, I'll I'll say that very clearly. Anybody who knows, has known me for more than 30 seconds, knows that that's true of me. However, when Luke and I were first married, um, we were married in 1999, party like it's 1999. And uh, I think I was trying to clarify the details of this story before I came to church tonight. I think it was just after we'd been married for one year because our wedding anniversary is in November. So I think we'd been married for a year. And then for Christmas, because we were poor as anything, both full-time students couldn't afford to barely eat. Somebody, I think Luke's mum, gave us a PS1. So this is 20 years ago. Put in the chat if you know what the heck a PS1 is, because I don't really know. I think it's like it was like the second ever kind of PlayStation um, after just the plain Sony PlayStation. I think the next version was a PS1. So we got this PS1 for Christmas, and uh, there we were playing it. It was uni holidays for me. What else did I have to do 24 hours a day but play video games? And so, you know, we were 20 years old, mind you. This is why I'm playing video games in my uni holidays. And what I learnt, while not knowing very much about video games, is that to go to the next level, you always have to go through some new challenges. So every time you want to level up, you have to experience some new challenges. You have to maybe beat a new enemy or somebody new comes around the corner with a new kind of weapon that you've never experienced before. There's some kind of new battle, new challenge, new experience, new thing to overcome before you can level up. And prayer and fasting is one of those things which says, I'm ready, God. I've made room for you to bring to me the preparation for the new. It's kind of like any other relationship. If you're in any kind of human relationship, then you would know that there's a surface level of relationship. You know, like when married couples tell me and they're early in their marriage and they tell me they never argue or fight. And I go, okay, come back to me in six months time and tell me if you never argue or fight because your relationship can only go so deep while ever you only, while ever you only tackle the things that are on the surface. But as soon as you encounter some kind of challenge, some kind of obstacle, some kind of place where your values maybe don't quite align, some kind of challenge, some kind of crisis, some kind of tragedy, and then you work through that together, the intimacy in the relationship grows. It deepens exponentially. And that's what's going to happen as you press in to these 21 days of prayer and fasting. It's going to build a new intimacy in your relationship with God, and it's going to prepare you for the new. You might call it the breaking before the building. I know that doesn't sound very fun, but we're going to get to a happy ending. So for me personally, if I share a story of my own breaking, and there's been a couple of big seasons in my life where I have experienced this kind of a breaking. Um, I actually went into 2020 last year, actually pre-pandemic, pre-isolation, pre-lockdown. I mean, what was I thinking? I don't know. But I kind of sensed in my talking to God at the start of the year, you know, setting goals, trying to set the year up well, that um, God was saying to me that if I was prepared to kind of go deeper, 
and uh, make room and rearrange my priorities and remove some things that, you know, maybe needed to be removed and maybe allowed him to prune some things off me, even though I knew that that might be painful and um, do the work, do the hard emotional work and take the time, then he would bless me with what I was asking for. And that was clarity of my calling and increased influence. So I went boldly in. This is These are the areas where I want to see breakthrough God and I'm going to be prepared to do what it takes. This is what I said to him. I went into 2020 pre ever even hearing about COVID and said, God, have your way in me. I'm ready. I'm ready to go to the next level. I'm ready for you to do whatever it takes to prepare me for what's next. But let me tell you, a total surrender of self like that always comes at a cost. The preparation is also a test of our willingness to stick with surrender. So let's take a prayer pause. This is what we've made room for over these 21 days because prayer and fasting is a slow down in order to speed up kind of principle. I likened it in our Toronto church yesterday to my friend Sam Hines' driving. So Sam Hines thinks that to get to places more quickly, he has to drive more quickly. But we know that in the kingdom of heaven, things are all upside down from the kingdom of earth. And so prayer and fasting is one of those things where we intentionally slow down We take a prayer pause. We take time away from regular routine in order to make room for the acceleration into the next level. It's an intentional pause to let God speak to us and make room, spend time just in his presence. You know, Jesus himself modeled this. In Luke chapter 15, uh, sorry, Luke chapter 5, we read a story where Jesus has performed another amazing physical healing miracle. And, you know, this is my interpretation reading into the text. I kind of think that Jesus was maybe a bit tired or he knew what was coming and that he needed to take some time away. And he knew what happened every time people heard about his miracles. So he told the guy that he healed, just don't tell anybody this time. Just don't tell anybody that I healed you, just this one time. But it says, despite Jesus' instructions, the report of his power, like good news does, spread even faster. And vast crowds came to hear him preach and to be healed of their diseases. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Even Jesus took a prayer pause away from regular routine away from the demands of family and work and even ministry to be away and hear from God, to spend time intentionally in his presence. And that's what we've made room for over these 21 days because the pause is preparation. Prayer and fasting is always the means to the new, new vision, new level of leadership, new ministry. Jesus' preparation for ministry was marked by a 40-day season of prayer and fasting. So not only do we have to take the prayer pause, but we have to take the test. And uh, this, is the, this is the not easy part. This is where you may be feeling the pull of it right now here on day nine. If you've been with us from day one, we're in what I'm calling the middle third. So at the start, it was fun. Maybe we were all talking to each other about what we were fasting. It seemed easy on days two and three, right? And now we're on day nine and there's a little bit more resilience required. There's a little bit more bravery and determination to keep pushing through, to keep making the decision to stick with it every day, to keep being consistent. Maybe some of us have failed already and we say, feel no guilt or shame. Just pull your socks back up tomorrow and start again. Get back on for day 10. And Jesus shows us what this season of testing can be like because he was tested while he was in a season of prayer and fasting too. It says in Matthew chapter 4 that he faced three tests, in fact, during his season of 40-day prayer and fasting, which was his accelerant preparation for his entire ministry. Let's take it up at the beginning of chapter 4. It says, Next Jesus was taken into the wild by the Spirit for the test, capital T, the test. The devil was ready to give it. 
Jesus prepared for the test by fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And that left him, of course, in a state of extreme hunger. So he's weak, he's vulnerable, which the devil took advantage of in the first test. So here's the devil goading him and baiting him. He says, since you are God's son, speak the word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread. He's trying to get Jesus to do what he says, the devil, instead of what his father in heaven says. And Jesus doesn't fall for it. He answered by quoting scripture because scripture was in him. It had been a part of his daily discipline since he was a child. He had learnt and memorised scripture. So when he faced the test, these were the words that came out of him. He said, it takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. Boom, one to Jesus, zero to the devil. Then for the second test, the devil took him to the holy city. That's Jerusalem. He sat him on top of the temple and said, Well, since you are God's son, jump again, baiting him, trying to get him to do what the devil says. The devil goaded him by quoting scripture right back at him. He said, he has placed you in the care of angels. They will catch you so that you won't so much as stub your toe on a stone. So there. But Jesus countered with another passage from the scripture that he knew. He said, don't you dare test the Lord your God. Sucker punch number two. So not only did he quote back scripture that was inside him, that had been built into his life and memory and very being since a young age, but he declared who he was. He revealed who he was. He said, don't you dare test the Lord your God. That's me. So then the devil stupidly has a third go for the third test the devil took him to the peak of a huge mountain he gestured expansively pointing out all the earth's kingdom how glorious they all were and then he said they're yours lock stock and barrel all you've got to do is just go down on your knees and worship me the devil and they're yours As though the devil has the power to do this, he tries to do what he tries to do by trickery and deception, tries to trick Jesus, God himself, with skin on into bowing down in worship before the wrong God. And this time, I think Jesus had had enough. He'd had 40 days of no food and drink. He was in the wilderness. He was tired and hungry and thirsty. And he says in this paraphrase, beat it, Satan. Boom, three to Jesus, zero to the devil. He backed his rebuke with a third quotation from scripture. Worship the Lord your God and only him. Serve him with absolute single heartedness. And with that, the test was over. The devil left. And then what happened? In the place of the devil, who came? Angels. Angels came and took care of Jesus' needs. And I want you to remember this point out of this message because sure, we're taking a prayer pause. We've made room for God to do miracles. We've made room to to draw near in closeness, to to deepen our intimacy in our friendship with Jesus. Sure, that's going to mean we're taking a test. We're surrendering and sacrificing something. We've made us, we've intentionally made ourselves a little bit uncomfortable. It's not that easy. We're doing it for a long-ish period of time, 21 days. For some of you, that's the longest you've stuck with anything. And here you are going without chocolate or coffee or social media for three whole weeks. And it's a test. But at the end, don't forget to look for the angels because they're going to be right there swooping down to care for you after a period of intense growth, after a period of intense preparation for what God's leading you into next. Help is always there, right there, ready to care for us if we just look around and see it. You know, after my 2020 year, I call it now, of what I felt like was an intense testing period where I kind of, 
I, I set myself up for it. I said, Jesus, have your way. God, have your way in me. I, I wanted a deeper intimacy. I wanted to experience a newness of the work of the Holy Spirit outworking himself through me and through my life. And I wanted to um, get a deeper intimacy with God, my Savior. I wanted to make room to hear from him. And it was hard. I faced some big tests. And I want to tell you, I failed sometimes too. And uh, there was no judgment. There was just a gentle word from God about pick yourself up, try again tomorrow. We're going to get this. We're going to get there. And now I look around and I can see that he placed in my way both friends and strangers to care for me and care for my needs and help me repair after some intensely difficult and painful moments in 2020. You know, there's been times over the past few months and weeks where I've even asked people outright, I've gone to them and I've said, have you been praying for me? Because I experienced a physical healing that I hadn't even actually been praying for. And I hadn't actually even been telling anybody about it. But I know, I can feel that somebody's been praying for me. I can feel that God's angels are all around me. And I hope whoever you are in the comment thread right now, I can see you, Richie, and I know you know that the angels are all around you. Nikki Evans, I know you know that the angels are all around you. You know, all we've got to do is look around and we'll see God's kingdom presence everywhere with the new eyes we have to see his kingdom all around, to see his care and provision all around. So sure, we might feel a little broken after this, but we'll get to the breakthrough. Sure, we're taking a prayer pause. Sure, we're going to take the test, but at the end, we can look up and we can see the angels. And I want to tell you, I see the angels already. We're on day nine. That's right, isn't it? We're on day nine of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I'm keeping a little miracle document over these 21 days. And I'm writing down every time I hear a story from one of our locations about something that you might think is inconsequential and I can see is an absolute miracle from the kingdom of heaven, I write it down. And I want to commit to you this as well. I'm also writing down in my little prayer journal that I'm keeping over these 21 days, all the individual prayer requests, all the beliefs for breakfast through that I hear about. So if you write them in the chat or you send me a private message, I'll find them and I'll add them. I'm handwriting them. I'm left-handed. I am handwriting them in my book because I'm a, I'm a speeder. I'm a rusher, right? Like you can hear it in my voice. I speed and rush everything. And I just felt like God's Spirit said to me, if I could write down these prayers, then that would help me take the intentional slow down to speed up principle that I can get access to in this season of prayer and fasting. And so can you. So let me know your prayer requests. I'd love to put them in my book and keep praying over them every night as I am with all the ones that I've got there. But I'm not going to leave tonight before giving an opportunity to anybody who's watching on Facebook or YouTube. Maybe it's the first time you've joined us here at Beyond Church Online. Maybe it's the 25th time and you've always been hiding in the background, never dared to show your face in a comment. But you know God's Spirit, His presence is with you right now. And you know tonight is your night to say yes to Jesus for the first time. It's the most important reason why I'm here is to make that invitation to you. Because this Easter, we're celebrating something we celebrate every year. And that's that God loved you so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to live on earth, to endure those grueling 40 days of preparation for a 33-year ministry to only die on a cross, but then be raised back to life to prove to you just how much God loves you. And so that he... 2,000 years later from this little studio, in this little inconsequential room, in this little part of Australia, I could make the invitation to you to make the decision which will change your life forever. For you to make the decision which sees you become a part of the kingdom of heaven for eternity and stop trying to figure it all out on your own. Stop trying to live by your own kind of gathered bits and pieces of information and values and what you've been taught and start to live by the way of the kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom. And so if that's you tonight, why don't you let me know by typing yes in the comments 
on Facebook or YouTube. Our team are dropping a link. I can see it right there. And you can fill out a form and that will help us to help you take your next step in your friendship with Jesus. And then why don't you join with me, whether you've said this prayer before or not. And let's pray to make Jesus the Lord of our lives again today or for the first time. Why don't you pray with me? Jesus, this is my decision. Today, I say yes to you. You died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I invite you to be my saviour. Come into my life. Forgive my sin and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.